Hello, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick, and I'm teaching the fundamentals of metal shaping. If you watch the video, how to lay out a cone, you saw in there how to use your smartphone and lay out a pattern and then print it out and get a paper pattern for your uh, fuel splash shield and the plenum chamber. In this video, I'll show you how to roll out that cone using the slip roll and I'll also be showing you how to tack weld and then weld it up complete. So let's see how those two operations are accomplished. So in order to make the plenum chamber, first we have to make the funnel portion, uh, the inner, inner portion of the, the plenum. And to do that, we start with a blank and put it through the slip roll here. First, I'm gonna put a couple of bends, very slight, in the leading edge. So we don't have a flat where we're starting. And there we are, uh, very close to a finished part, ready for welding. Here on the left are 25 plantum chambers rolled. Uh, the joints have been cleaned and ready for welding. And likewise, on the right are 25 of the fuel splash shields. And they have been worked a slight amount over a mandrel and the weld joints cleaned. Okay, so the next thing for us to do is tack the pieces together. I've got, uh, got it clamped on two ends and supported by a, a small piece coming out of the, off of the table. I'm just gonna put three tacks on it. One at each end and then one right in the middle. So I'm gonna flux those areas and tack them up. Now you'll notice that I tried to keep the tacks 
as small as possible and uh, very concentrated. Uh, I was taught how to weld aluminum with the oxyacetylene back in the early 60s by a fellow named John Olson who was brought to the Shelby American uh, facility to work on the Daytona coupes. And so the, the way that I weld is more of the British uh, style. Uh, you won't see too many people in the United States welding the same way as I do. So um, later on when you see the welds completed, uh, it's, it's just it's going to be something different than you're used to seeing here in the United States. Now that the parts have been uh, tacked together and tuned a little bit on the on a mandrel, uh, I'll put them on a little piece that I've mounted to the table and flux the whole joint, getting them ready to weld up. I'll put about six inches of flux on the rod using my flux caddy. First I'll weld up about uh, maybe a half inch on both the top and the bottom portion and that adds a little bit more mass to the ends uh, both the, the start and the end of the weld and that helps control the heat when I weld the piece up complete. Now if you notice my left hand uh, which is holding the rod is held very steady and uh, stays right in the middle of the seam that I'm welding up and you'll notice that the torch is constantly moving up and down. Uh, some of the time it's on the parent material, some of the time it's up on the rod and that's how I maintain a certain width of the weld bead itself and then finishing off a weld uh, takes quite a bit of time to learn how to do. And you will notice that the inside of the weld and the outside of the weld look exactly the same. And that is how the two main pieces are formed and welded. Be sure to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.